Hey everybody, Will Tompkins here, Tom Cruise Studios, Live Music in Austin, bringing you another episode, episode number eight of Three Beers and a Whiskey, featuring an interview with Come and Take It Live, located on Riverside Drive in Austin, Texas. Here's beer number one. Everybody, Will here at Tom Cruise Studios, live music in Austin. Tonight, another episode of Three Beers and a Whiskey. Uh, very, very proud and happy to have with me in the house. I've got Anthony Stevenson, Ben Davis from Come and Take It Live. Um, we were chatting a few minutes ago, and you know, I've known Ben for uh, a long time. We're coming to realize, and Anthony, I guess we'll get into figuring that out. Uh, so anyway, cheers, guys. Hey, man, thanks very much for. Uh, Coming in, I appreciate you uh, taking time to sit down with me and drink some beer. Thank well, you for having us, remember. Thank you, brother. So, Anthony, how, uh, where, uh, how and where did you come into the dirty dog picture? Because, so, backstory, Ben used to be run the shit over the dirty dog for all... Pretty much from day one. It was, yeah, yeah I mean, you passed the 10-year anniversary because I wrote about that yeah. in Live Music in Austin. Um, but somewhere in the middle of that, you know, I just remember coming in one day to see a show and, you know, Anthony was there because you did everything, dude. You promoted the shows, you did the tickets, you took the money at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and you kind of still do, actually. We learn in the weeds sometimes. Yeah. Right? Um, Unfortunately, we, we've got some rare siding behind the box <laughs> office. <laughs> right. So what, uh, how did, uh, was it because of Dirty Dong or how did you guys meet? I'm pretty sure that, I mean, well, D Dirty Dog was definitely the uh, source, I guess, but we had, uh, had a lot of mutual friends. Uh, we kind of known each other through blah, blah, blah. His band had played there a few times. Okay. Um, and uh, he had gotten into the game of booking at some point in time. I'm not sure exactly how. He'll tell you that story, I'm sure. And then he just said, hey, I want to book a show. And I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> And who, who was doing your booking before that? Was it just random or was it uh, basically there? me? Okay, I, I so was, yeah, you were like, oh, you're, hey, yeah. what's the thing I have to do? And I hated it with a passion. Yeah, and so it, he walked up and was like, I want to, want to put a show here, and I was like, uh, let's please do that, and it went well, uh, well enough. I don't think it went very well for him financially, but it went well <laughs> enough for us at Dirty Dog. I was like, hey, let's 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 keep doing this. Uh, and was it already come and take a productions then or hmm. okay at the time? Yeah, at a. Uh, Creative Come and Take Your Productions is a way to kind of encompass um, an annual event that I was doing at the time. Just wanted to have an umbrella. Are you still doing that event? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Texas Independence Fest. Independence Fest, Fest yeah. Yeah. And um, I had booked a couple of venues downtown that, that uh, were okay, but needed a place that was a bit more accommodating. and uh, For the type of crowd? And, uh, or yeah, just the size? Just across the board. Right? Oh, okay. Um, and my brother was delivering beer downtown at the time and had met some of the bartenders that were down there mm -hmm. and was like, hey man, you need to go check out this place, Dirty Dog. They, it seems like the type of place that's right up your alley uh, for the music that you book it. And went down, checked it out, met Ben and the gang, and as it turns out, it was. Just kind of yeah, nice. yeah, it was perfect. Man, that's perfect. And how long ago was that? That was... We're in 18 now. We're about to hit 19. <laughs> Come and Take it Productions will be 10 years old. Uh, as of August of 2019, so about nine years ago. And so time moves on, crawls on, life goes forward, and somehow a wild hair crawled up y'all's ass and decided, I'm not working for anybody else now, I want to do this for me. Well, he was already working for himself, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, I was essentially working for myself when yeah, Chris I mean, and I were kind of doing Dirty Dog. And, yeah, you pretty much were running uh, shit. Yeah, and, and we, we just both kind of wanted to do something bigger and better. Uh, very limited things that we could do with uh, live music on 6th Street. One, it was dying just rapidly, as you're aware. Yeah. Um, we were running out of space. He kept getting bigger and better shows, and the space was a thing as far as amenities as well, green rooms, tour parking, things like that, <laughs> that you just couldn't get away with downtown. Yeah. You know? and, uh, and so we started talking about it, I guess, what, 2015? Well, there was a whole long story that I, speech that I gave at his wedding. Uh, uh, <laughs> that how this, we were just shit hammered. I'm sure I can say that, right? Uh, that yes. <laughs> you eating a lot of beeps talking to me. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we went to a Ryan's wedding. You know Ryan, yeah. the bartender, the yep. dog. 
Uh, we were both invited to his wedding and we went up to Montana and I just somehow got stuck without any kind of transportation or room or whatever. <laughs> and in Montana. I love a room. He rolled right. It was a last minute thing. I wasn't going to go and then all of a sudden it was and he was Ooh. like, hey man, just, and we'd known each other but only did you visit that? that? I did not that oh, okay. no. Sorry, that's a joke. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we got, we got closer and closer to the date and he was like, hey man, uh, his girlfriend, now wife at the time, Nadia was like, just, Let's share a cabin. We've already got a car. We've already got a cabin. Just stay with us. I was like, sounds like a plan. Uh, throughout that trip was a whole bunch of bunch of booze, bunch of booze, and just kind of brainstorming, and getting to know each other throughout the drive and the trip and whatnot, and realized that we had a whole lot in common and cool. had a lot of the same goals and a lot of the same respects for a lot of the same things, and just over a I believe it was a bottle of champagne in the driveway in the middle of the woods in Montana. Mm-hmm. Just was like, let's just do this. <laughs> that and sounds like a fucking book that either goes really um, bad or ends up really good. Well, we'll let you know if you get to it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically that was how it started. And then we came back and let everything kind of simmer for a little while. And then as it got closer, him needing bigger rooms and, uh, you know, he was, the bigger shows that he couldn't do at Dirty Dog, he was doing at other places, but it cost him a ton of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't mean to speak for you, sorry, I'm just going to tell the story. And uh, Anthony. Let me know ahead of time. He's like, I'm a super big time talker when we get on video. I'm, I'm a yapper, man. I will tear it up. <laughs> <laughs> going, you know, shut up. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So yeah, we needed the space, and we started kind of uh, bantering around about ideas, and and it takes a uh, it takes quite a bit to uh, to jump off the cliff with something like that, especially in the live music industry in a building that has not been successful with some large names. Uh, no and, shit. And it was There's really really scary here inside of that building. Yeah, and it was um, really scary. Uh, but I think at the time when we decided to do it, literally the stars and moons just all kind of came. It was yeah. perfect for him. It was perfect for me. Uh, the guy who owned it, and that was yep, something he, he else. Needed, he needed it out, and we man. were just kind of ready to jump on ship, and we did. And it's been going pretty good ever since. I'll tell you, I don't, I, I don't, I don't remember how I found out or knew that you guys had taken over uh, the former name of the place, and. And in fact, it still had that branding on it for a long time, even after you guys. It was well pulled off the wall, yeah. Yeah, and, and, well, that and the internet just kept every time tagged. And was, Google did not want to give no. up that name. We fought for a so, long time. Um, <laughs> but I remember, I, I don't know if it was a South by event or something where I ended up passing by, and I know you weren't at Dirty Dog anymore. That, I'll speak for you on that because that, to me, that was speaks volumes about not just the relationship you guys have and what. You've created together, but it's so like they're married and had a kid or something, right? <laughs> um, and yeah, but but the impact of the circle of people around them because going into Dirty Dog one day and that Ben's not there, and then I'm like, who are you? Who are you? Who the, what? There's like three people at the bar that I knew. Everybody else was all new faces or different. And then I went down to what's now come and take it live, and. There was there, there, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Then left, walk out the door, and it was like, like a f- movie. You know, it was like, "Hey, I'm leaving," and everybody else goes, "If he leaves, we're going with him." And it was a mass exodus. It was, it was relatively close to that. Uh, yeah. We tried to do it uh, ethically and politically. We didn't just say, "Hey, come with us." You know, we yeah. we made everybody do a interview interview in the, the hiring process. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to be fair to everybody, and I didn't want to be that guy that's just like, "I'm out of here," and taking everybody with me and. Uh, uh, nobody was promised a job at all. Everybody interviewed, and of course, unfortunately, the the way it goes, if I've worked with you for that long, there's a reason why. And yeah, of course, I'm going to hire you. So yeah. uh, we ended up hiring a good fair amount of people that used to work at Dirty Dog, and it, uh, most of them are still there. Yeah. We literally walked into a room. I mean, I'm sure you know the story. We, uh, my, I think my last day at Dirty Dog was the November 28th, mm. and our first show was DRI on December 1st. So we went in there yeah. two days. But essentially three days and yeah. no sleep. Like just came in there, rest shop, did what we could, uh, and got it up and running. Just kicked doors with no dry run, no nothing, and just hoped for the best. And it went off pretty flawlessly, honestly. Well, yeah. Okay. So wait, how long? How long has Come and Take It Live been open now? Technically, uh, we got the bar December first of twenty sixteen. Yeah, twenty sixteen. Yeah. That was the uh, show. Yeah. And due to liquor live uh, liquor laws and things like that, uh, yeah, you stayed under the. Exactly. We were under a management agreement with uh, with Grizzly Hall at okay. that point in time, and the prior owner. And uh, until our liquor license came through, we were not able to actually operate under Come and Take It Live. 
So we had to wait for our liquor license to come through. When she six know, months or something. Like that. Uh, it was closer to. It ended up being closer to four. Okay. But uh, it's supposed to be March, March 28th, 28th is our actual <laughs> opening day for Come and Take It Live. Yeah. December first. So you've hit two years. Mm-hmm. You passed the two year mark for the, of being in the building at least. In the building. Yeah. But with the name, so two years will be in March, March of nineteen. And we are planning some kind. Of, we didn't do anything for one year. We had a party. Well, I kind of. But it was a little. I kind of, uh, I planned it. It was going to be the Dirty Worms. I think Ovi as well. Uh, Ovi was the headline. And Dirty Worms opened for him. And Terrell, I, uh, I believe. Uh, Terrell Shahid, whatever the right. incarnation of his band. And Michael Dillard was, Michael Dillard was on the board. That. Yeah, okay. The problem was that uh, uh, I, for 13 years, the anniversary date was April 28th at Dirty Dog. Because Dirty Dog, yes. And <laughs> That's I, what it was. I, I kind of screwed that up. So it was actually, we already way past our anniversary. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to try to throw it. It doesn't make sense. It. Okay, yeah. So we gave up on the one year, and we're going to go and do something hopefully pretty big on the two year. No. Yeah, do, do we need a reason to party and just have a... Good not at all. <laughs> so we were also just slammed ass. I mean, we literally came out the doors just swinging. And, and, and have been doing it since. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We, we've had a little bit of dead time, but not a whole lot. A little bit of dead time. Uh, for anybody that was at the building, in the building, when we first got it up until now, there's been a bunch of changes, a bunch of renovations, a bunch of uh, building this and decorating that and all that kind of stuff, but we never closed down for any long period of time to do right. all that. We just had to do it. Okay, well, in between, don't get any sleep tomorrow morning. Yeah. Leave here at 4 in the morning. Oh, by the way, I need you back at 8. Cause Show's done at 11. Close the doors at midnight. Let's do this until load uh, in tomorrow. Uh, yeah, you know, there's a bunch of those days. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm on the, the list for the Come and Take It Productions, like, the street team and put a shout out saying, hey, we need somebody yeah. last minute that can do this. <laughs> and Wednesday, I was on my way home and you had sent out that shout out like, please, we need, Chelsea Grin has got like, we need cereal. <laughs> yeah, we need cereal some, for real? We need some last minute running for the show. Yeah. And uh, uh, the gentleman who was going to do the running had to cancel because of school for, you know, class mm-hmm. purposes and whatnot. But then uh, he decided to do that and also worked out. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my, my again, once again, uh, my epic failure on uh, the, the videos here, YouTube, Facebook. I did a great job of introducing Anthony and Ben, and completely blew my ass off by not introducing the beautiful Miss Marissa Cruz, who is serving our beer tonight and our whiskey, and she is running that. She's doing everything tonight. She's keeping us in check. Um, and you've got some stuff coming in off the internet. I have a question. Uh, yeah. Um, so anybody that knows a little bit of Texas history knows what oh. come and take it mm-hmm. means. Cool. So how and why did y'all name your bar or your club the, come and take it live? How to come and take it. So I'm going to take a, it's from come and take it production. It was a natural progression to get the live part well, with the production side of things. So let's hear from the silent one. Well, yeah. so, <laughs> The, the decision behind naming the production company that was because I was up against a lot of other talent buyers in the area and, uh, you know, similar to oh. Texas history, just kind of said, you know, hey, um, you know, here, here's a can and come and take it. It's like, well, you know, here's, uh, I'm basically going to go head up against the rest of you guys for the shows, you know, um, and it's going to be a difficult well, process and, um, you know, I'm going to stand on the ground and I'll do the best that I can be the, the new guy, you know, and, you um, and it's kind of progressed from there. Dude, cheers to you, brother. Tell you what, not to, not to take anything away from him at all. Getting in there is, I'm, is I'm sure, three-quarters of the battle, but the other 25% is no joke making those shows go off correctly mm-hmm. with some of these bigger, bigger talents. Uh, it's, it, they, they are... Prima donna. Well, do. not, actually, not very many of them are that bad, but the, but the production value of it and, the, and you know, getting everything in order, especially somewhere downtown uh, where there's no parking, no green room, things like that, all the things that were against us, it's much, much easier now. Um, that we have those things available to us. Now, before I talk shit about the green room, was someone else coming out? Uh, along the lines of that last question, um, either of you, where did you get all the memorabilia for your club? Oh, see, that's a great question. I'll, I'll tail end off Because that. as soon as you walk in, when you go when you go through the doors, there's a... The arm like, rail. Like, yeah. yeah. So where did and you get the all the memorabilia from? And the cannon... Uh, to the right of um, yep. the where the register is, mm-hmm. as soon as you walk in. So, where did you get all the memorabilia for for your club? I'll let him speak on the cannon. the uh, The little shadow box thing is we it was there when we got there. I think they had mm. plants or something in it. They did, yeah. And it was just it wasn't enclosed; it was open. Yeah, it was wide open. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what to do with this. It's kind of a waste of space. Like, whatever we do. And so I was like, all right, everybody, 
Uh, we took the whole staff out and brought a bunch of shotguns and went and bought as many red, white, and blue shot shells as we could find. Oh, no shit. And just started just blowing shit up. And uh, just everybody went home with a busted shoulder that day from blowing shotgun yeah. shells. And uh, all the other extra memorabilia, I have to give a shout out to Hollywood. And, okay. from, uh, uh, his, he had a bunch of, uh, his family had a bunch of things. <coughs> old West things that right. just kind of played into it that they went in there. I can't remember off, uh, some spurs and oh, yeah, uh, yeah. a copy of the uh, Texas of, uh, Independence of, of, of the actual in, uh, Independence and uh, keys and some photos and stuff like that. Yeah, ran, uh, old actual original Alamo photos. And the gun. Uh, the gun is a replica by law. Have to cannot have a working uh, uh, weapon in the in the venue, but uh, it is an exact replica of a of a brown vest, I believe, is what it's called, which was. What was used in that time period uh, to on both sides uh, of the of the revolution? Um, so we thought that was a good little touch, and it's obviously a, a and people ask about it. So. And the cannon, <clears throat> yeah, cannon. So there's your story. Uh, well, the cannon we inherited from um, one of our. our <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Many faces. It's a beautiful place. Oh, by the way, y- y'all will see this in a minute. Let's let, <laughs> let Anthony finish it. Now that he's distracted, finish it. <laughs> Cannon story. Uh, one of our, our bartenders at the time, Cracker, was working, or he had previously worked out at uh, Cannon Bar on the Backbone, which is a real cool spot mm-hmm. on Devil's Backbone. Um, the San Marcos area, or? Thank you, sir. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I, yeah I, I got you, I got you. Yeah, uh, along Devil's Backbone. It was a really cool bar, um, kind of just out there in the Seed and Kill Country, and they had uh, this folk cannon that I believe the, the owner mm-hmm. had, had made and built. And it's, really? It's, uh, I mean, I don't want to give away any secrets. Well, but it's it's a badass can. It's a badass replica that he made. Yeah. I believe it's on a definite loan. I don't think we actually own that can. Yeah. So any- Thank you very much for tuning in to that episode of Three Beers and a Whiskey featuring Ben Davis and Anthony Stevenson from Come and Take It Live. Uh, appreciate y'all. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, little bell notification to come back, and make sure you catch future videos from Three Beers and a Whiskey. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>